welcome back to the channel, and in today's video we're not talking about Season 11, awesome, but today's going to be a pretty fun upload, and the majority of Ninjago seasons seem to follow a basic plot structure incorporating villains and set collectibles and stuff. So in today's video we're going to be breaking down Ninjago's film The Blank Plot as I like to call it. So here is, and if you notice the Mad Libs logo on the thumbnail, kudos to you. Basically, you can just fill this in, and I encourage you to post your wacky creations down in the comment sections below. And even if you have any serious ideas, just post anything you want down in the comment sections below as long as it's appropriate and all. The ninja are doing activity when suddenly villain comes and attack them. They want the number artifact in order to plan. The ninja try to get the items before the villain does, but lose, and the villain's plan is executed. Just when all seems lost, the ninja save the day by action. Hooray! So let's discuss the first blank. The ninja are doing something. This something is generally emphasized in the first episode of the season, and in most seasons it usually doesn't really fit into the plot, seems to be pretty forced into it, and it just doesn't work naturally. Examples of this include the ninja becoming famous in season 6, them becoming teachers in season 3, or in season 11, them suddenly becoming lazy. You know, you get the idea of it. This seems to happen in a lot of Ninjago seasons, and the exceptions to this are when the season is a continuation of the past story, those being usually seasons 4 and 10 and 9. These don't really follow that, and 8 as well. Suddenly, villain comes and attacks them. It doesn't have to be an attack, but the idea of this is that a villain in the first episode is generally introduced right away. Generally though, the villain is introduced in the form of an attack, which does affect the ninja. The notable instances of this are seasons 5 and season 7. In season 5, this comes as a big shock that Moro even exists, and suddenly Lloyd has been possessed, and in season 7, Wu does lose the battle. This has also happened, or something similar has also happened in season 6 and season 3, with in season 3, the overlord suddenly being introduced and using robots to attack the ninja, and in Season 6, Nautacon uses shape-shifting to get the ninja in trouble with the law. I didn't put this in the outline, but there's also the villain's backstory, which oftentimes happens right away, and would usually be introduced in the second episode after their debut, or a few episodes after. The big instances, again, are Seasons 5 and Season 7, and then you also have Season 11, with Asphira's backstory being introduced a few episodes later. The next sentence, they want the number of artifact in order to plan. This is where our set collectibles come into play. In every wave, there are a few artifacts or pieces that are scattered throughout the sets, and it encourages the buyers to basically collect all the sets so that they can have all the collectibles. And this is how the writers generally put it into the plot. So the villain does need all these artifacts in order for them to execute their plan. It doesn't have to be a tangible artifact or a physical thing. It can also be something else that needs to happen, such as Nauticon wedding Nia in Season 6. You get the idea, though. It's something that the ninja have to try to prevent them from acquiring. This has happened in pretty much every single season except for March of the Oni. You have the pilots and the golden weapons, then you have the four fang blades needed to release the devourer. In season 2, it's the overlord wanting to create Garmatron and start the final battle. Season 3 actually switches it up at first with the ninja being the ones who want the artifacts, but then they change it up when the overlord needs the golden weapons. In season 4, you have Chen trying to take everyone's powers, and in season 5, it's the realm crystal. Season 6 is marrying Nia, season 7 is the time blade, season 8 is the Oni mask, season 9's first realm story has the dragon armor, the resistance story does not follow the normal plot structure, season 10 doesn't really have this, and season 11 is the school of forbidden spinjitsu with Asphira. The ninja try to get the items before the villain does, or rather prevent the villain from acquiring whatever they want, but they fail and the villain's plan is executed. In the seasons where these artifacts are actually physical, those being 1, 5, 7, and 8, usually the ninja are trying to race the villains to get them before the villains do, or once the villains have already acquired these artifacts, the ninja try to steal it from them. In the end though, the ninja don't win, and one way or another, the villain manages to succeed. In season 3, the overlord becomes the golden master, Garmaron gets brought back from the dead, the preeminent comes to Ninjago, the great devourer is released, etc. Also, after this event, the artifacts are generally never used in the series again, and are thrown into the void of things that will never return. And the last part of our plot template, just when all seems lost, the ninja saved the day by doing something. Hooray! This is the part of the template that I don't like, because the villain's plan here is supposed to be invincible, there's not supposed to be a way of defeating it, but the ninja magically finds something to do, and everything is fine after that. Consider the following. The first Vinjutsu Master, the most powerful person to have ever existed, can't defeat the Overlord. But some Nindroid who has the power of ice, which just doesn't compare to the first Vinjutsu Master, is able to defeat the Overlord for good. This also kind of applies to Season 2's ending, but it's a bit different since Lloyd in his golden power form was a lot more powerful than Zane. 
Then you also have the Preeminent, a gigantic realm which is taken down by a single wave. And then there's also the Great Devourer, and Nauticon's Infinite Wishes, and the Iron Doom, but you get the point and all, it just happens all the time, and it's just really boring because it's so predictable. In my opinion, the villain at full power with their master plan having been achieved is one of the best things about the season, and it's usually confined to one episode, which isn't nearly enough time for it. I thought season 8 would be following this same idea with Garmadon getting turned good, but it's actually the first season where the ninja lose, and this is one of many reasons why I think the Oni trilogy is Ninjago's peak. It breaks away from this classic plot structure and does some things that really aren't predictable, such as doing three seasons about the same storyline and the darker tone and stuff, and it's not predictable at all, which is what I love. It takes risks and it doesn't follow the same structure. However, that is not to say that the fill in the blank plot is bad, because there are times when it's been executed really, really well, and those instances would be seasons four, season five, but there are also times when it's not executed well, such as season seven, and I would like to see Ninjago try to break away from this plot more. Season 11 has been doing a good job of this, especially in the ice chapter. The fire chapter was kind of sticking to this, but the newer seasons have been doing a great job of breaking away from this classic plot structure, and I really like that. So I hope that they will continue to do this and try out new ideas. Anyways, that'll wrap up this video. Feel free to film the plot structure yourself and post your own crazy ideas down in the comment section below. I'd love to read them. But yeah, thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and share with anyone ever you know. Post your crazy creations down below and your thoughts on my video, and I will see you next time.